Hi, my name is Shaheen. I'm an engineering manager here at Google, and today I'm going to tell you about Google's Cloud TPUs. One of many challenges that companies are facing to train ML models is that the state of the art in machine learning models is growing very fast. As a result, there is a need for training models faster than ever before. In order to achieve this speed up, there are three approaches that have proven to be useful. First, using specialized hardware for machine learning. Google has developed the TPUs with a custom design, particularly for machine learning workloads. Second, the ability to scale your training on many accelerators in parallel. Distributed training on thousands of accelerators has proven to be a great technique for reducing the overall training time of ML models. And third, the software stack that is able to take advantage of such a scale of distributed accelerators is an important part of success in training models faster than ever before. Let's look at the TPU and TPU pods. The Cloud TPU v3 became generally available on GCP in January 2019. Since then, many customers have taken advantage of these machines in the cloud. Also, the TPU v3 pod has enabled customers to use 100 petaflops of compute power in GCP. Sundar recently announced our latest TPU generation, the TPU v4 at Google I.O. These machines are powered by the v4 chip, which is more than twice as fast as the v3 chips. Like the TPU v3, the TPU v4s are connected together into supercomputers called pods. A single v4 pod contains 4096 v4 chips, and each pod has 10x the interconnect bandwidth per chip at a scale compared to any other networking technology. This makes it possible for a TPU v4 pod to deliver more than one exaflop per second of computing power. Next, let's talk about the distributed training using thousands of TPUs. The latest results of MLPerf, which were published in June this year, included a submission using TPU v4 pods for ResNet 50, which was the fastest time to train the model at just 14 seconds. As a comparison, when the original paper was published in 2015, the time to train the model was about 29 hours on GPUs. The winning submission from Google is using more than 3,400 chips to train ResNet 50. In fact, across many tasks in MLPerf, including rankings and recommendations, as well as natural language processing, TPU v4s have demonstrated speedups over fastest submissions from the industry. If you are interested in the full MLPerf results, I invite you to take a look at our blog post that goes into more details about the submission. Now, let's talk about the flexible software that enables interactive supercomputing on this platform. Regardless of your ML framework of choice, cloud TPUs can help you achieve the best performance for training your model. So whether you're using TensorFlow, PyTorch, or JAX, the best and easiest APIs are available to train your model. A typical cloud TPU development workflow may consist of starting with one of many open source reference models or developing a model with your own code. Next, you would use a single TPU device to test for functionality and correctness of your code and validate your desired performance metrics. Once you have this model ready, you can start by moving to a larger TPU pod slice, say a V332, by verifying that your hyperparameters are still good for larger scale training and to ensure that you can obtain linear or close to linear scalability. Depending on your model and your desired performance targets, you can then increase the slice size to a full pod or to the limit that your model allows. TensorFlow has introduced the Distribution Strategies API, which allows you to write cross-compatible code for a wide variety of hardware configurations, such as TPUs, TPU pods, GPUs, as well as multi-GPU machines. As you can see, with only a few lines of code, you can detect the hardware and select the appropriate distribution strategy. TPU strategy for TPUs or TPU pods mirror the strategy for GPUs or multi-GPU machines. To use a distribution strategy, instantiate your model in the strategy scope, and you are done. The rest is regular Keras code. You can also try it out with the Colab sample at bit.ly slash keras tpu. While training, the batches are automatically split between the TPU cores. As you perform the hyperparameter tuning, you can use settings from the strategy that would allow the optimum batch size as well as learning rate. Notice that the compile fit calls are the same as normal Keras code. 
To improve performance, you would set step per execution higher than one, say to hundreds of steps, knowing that the per batch callbacks would only be executed every hundreds of batches. Another major feature of the cloud TPUs that makes the user experience incredibly smooth is the new TPU VM experience. In the past, for using TPUs on cloud, a network attached architecture was used. The user would connect to a VM and then interact with the TPUs through gRPC calls. This was difficult to debug and sometimes introduced delays in the experience. With the all-new TPU VM architecture, you have root access to every TPU VM you create, so you can install and run any code you wish in a tight loop with your TPU accelerators. You can use local storage, execute custom code in your input pipelines, and more easily integrate cloud TPUs into your research and production workflows. I'm excited to say that the Cloud TPU v4 with the TPU VM architecture will be available in GCP this quarter. If you're interested in early access, please contact Google Cloud Support. Remember, you can always get in touch by visiting g.co slash cloud TPU.